Hello and welcome everyone to our third session today. So welcome back to the Cloud Advocate Certificate uh, or Certification Track. Um, we are doing this part of the Cloud Training and IBM Community Festival. And uh, we are continuing now with Unit 4 of Understanding IBM Cloud Essentials, um, looking at services on IBM Cloud. My name is Christo Healy and I'm coming to you live from South Africa. Right, so let's jump in and have a look at the main objectives for this module. Right, so firstly, we're going to start by looking at the different IBM Cloud uh, databases. And then we're going to look at the integration services uh, within IBM Cloud. We're going to look at some of uh, the uses and functions of AI, as well as mach machine learning uh, that's available from IBM Cloud. And then we're going to look at recognizing the analytics uh, services that are available from IBM Cloud. We're going to look at uh, DevOps processes and also uh, some of uh, the IBM DevOps services that are available and identify what the blockchain options are that are available from IBM Cloud, as well as the basics of the IoT platform. And then lastly, we're finishing off with the IBM Cloud Pack options from IBM Cloud. So let's quickly have a look at some of the main lessons for this unit. We will start by focusing on databases, move on to integration, then AI, followed by analytics, and then DevOps, as well as blockchain. We'll look at Internet of Things, Cloud Packs, and then lastly, we'll follow up with a quick summary and some knowledge check questions. Right, so starting off with the databases. Okay, so a database would be a organized collection of actual uh, data that is stored on a computer. And traditional uh, databases would organize data in rows and columns and in, in actual fact then utilize a structural uh, or structured query language or SQL. Now this is the type of language that would be utilized to go about accessing the data. Now. Um, they are also known as SQL databases, these structured databases. And databases that do not go about depending on SQL are what we refer to as no SQL databases. Now, there are many different types of databases. However, there are three that are focused on with our topics here. So firstly, relational databases. These would be a collection of data organized into a table structure, as well as organized into row, rows and columns, and then uh, would obviously be based on SQL, which would be used for updates and queries. And they're also very good uh, for asset compliance and high transaction uh, uh, applications, for example, online data processing and so on. Now, next is a document databases. So these are flexible schemas. They do not depend on SQL in itself. And also they are more suited in terms of storing semi-structured data. Now, some common use cases for document databases include customer data, uh, user-generated content, and uh, order data. Next, we have our key value databases. So these are non-relational databases. So they do not depend on SQL at all. The data that's stored um, is a collection of key value pairs um, where a key serves as a unique identifier for the database. And some common use cases for your key value data pairs include your leaderboards, uh, caches, as well as uh, shopping cart data and so on. All right, so let's have a look at utilizing database as a service. All right, so DBAS is basically a cloud computing uh, service that allows the users to go about accessing and also utilizing cloud database systems without having to purchase and set up their own hardware. Now, installing their own database software or managing the database themselves, none, none of these are a requirement. 
Now, it's generally used in a financial uh, implication. For example, it would be much simpler and less costly in terms of management as the cloud provider goes about managing everything for the customer. Also, clients uh, can choose to go about managing certain aspects on their own. Next is our operational uh, um, uh, example. For example, it would be uh, scalable and quick and, and easily provisioned with additional storage as well as additional computing capacity at a runtime uh, level. Or alternatively, it can also be scaled down in terms of the database cluster during non-peak usage of the actual database. Now, um, next we have a strategic usage. So this would be for rapid development as well as faster time to market. And also you can access the database capabilities that allow for configuration of a database ready to integrate with applications within minutes. Right, so let's have a look at the different uh, options that are available in terms of the cloud databases from IBM. Right, so IBM Cloud has a multitude of different database options available. Firstly, we have our relational uh, databases. So we have DB2, which is a fully hosted and highly uh, performant relational database um, that can uh, run enterprise class DB2 database engines. Also, we have DB2 hosted, which allows clients to go and run DB2 with full admin access on the actual cloud infrastructure. We also have uh, MySQL, so this would be one of the more popular databases, and it's free under the GNU um, uh, General Public License uh, uh, for, for utilization. We also have a Postgre uh, in terms of our relational uh, databases, which would be an open, open source uh, object relational uh, database with 30 years of history, and this is also known as Postgre SQL. Now, when it comes to the document databases, we have, for example, MongoDB. Now, this would be a popular uh, document database um, uh, that is available as a managed service on IBM Cloud. Also, we have um, features as a flexible uh, data model uh, or that would be high availability, automated backup, orchestration, auto scaling, and also coupled with um, allocation of storage. Um, v, uh, virtual CPUs, RAM, and uh, it would also be HIPAA compliant um, for, in terms of the database. Next database that we have in terms of our document databases includes uh, Cloudant. So this is uh, one of IBM's database as a service uh, based on Apache's CouchDB. So what it provides is a 99.99% .99 service level agreement um, and also um, the next one that we have is Elasticsearch. Now, in terms of that database, IBM's Cloud Enterprise, uh, or it is IBM's Cloud Enterprise Ready fully managed solution for all of your uh, JSON uh, document indexing as well as full text search capabilities. In terms of key value databases, we have Redis, which would be a open source um, in-memory data structure store basically used as a database, uh, a cache, as well as a message broker. And then lastly, for our key value databases, we have ETCD. So this is a object relational database uh, management system with a emphasis on extensibility and on standards compliance. Okay, so next let's have a look at the integration side of things. So when it comes to integration, it provides specific connectivity um, as well as uh, routing and transformation for different types of services. And it also allows and enables the sharing of data as well as connecting applications and security. And IBM Cloud has several different services that allow for the enablement of integration, each of which have a free or a light tier plan available. So let's quickly go through them. Firstly, we have API Connect, which uh, gives us an API creation and management, along with security-rich features and also a centralized governance area. 
So we have comprehensive end-to-end -end API lifecycle solutions um, that allow us to have automated creation of our APIs. Also, we have a rapid uh, or rapidly generating uh, uh, in terms of Swagger compliant ABIs, um, which form back-end data sources. We also have our graphic uh, or, or it can go about graphically assembling API in, invocation flows, and we can apply access control policies with it. Now, you can also utilize it in terms of sharing and publishing, as well as managing API descriptions, and this is going to be done through a self-service portal. In terms of your analytics, you can go and view the different analytics as well as individual data uh, about your APIs, um, and uh, this is done with uh, API Connect, which allows for the connection of um, so, so so next sorry yeah so, which is done with APIs the viewing of the applications uh, data and so on. Now next is the App Connect. So App Connect basically allows us to have a connection of our actual applications as well as some additional automation of our tasks with uh, a, a very a large amount of, of, of uh, built-in connectors associated with it. And it allows us to go about connecting a whole bunch of different applications, as well as to go and enable event trigger actions. Um, we can enable the event trigger actions between our applications and so on. And also we can go about automating workflows. You also have the capability with the App Connect to go and uh, use it for integration of data and apps with over 75 different connectors and also more than 50 different templates that are available for you that are already configured. You can also use it to expose flows as uh, REST APIs in order to assist in quick application development. And um, this makes it uh, quite, quite a um, useful um, uh, how can we say, um, version or uh, application uh, in terms of, of our integration side of things. All right, next we have our event streams. Now, when it comes to event streams, this also includes a very high throughput message bus that is already built in with uh, Apache Kafka. Now, this is a fully managed Apache Kafka service that has been built with open source uh, Apache Kafka projects. And uh, it's going to be highly available and resilient, and you are capable of leveraging availability zone support from IBM Kubernetes services in order to ensure that your applications will continue to work for an, uh, an entire zone um, uh, that might be unavailable. All right, so should one zone uh, become unavailable, your uh, application and, and environment will remain functional. Now, it is an intuitive, or intuitive uh, user experience. Also, it, pro it provides event-driven architecture. And also, it can integrate with um, the Internet of Things utilizing Watson and also IBM Cloud Function in order to leverage event streams. All right, and the last option that we have is MQ. So this uh, provides us uh, in enterprise-grade messaging capabilities. Um, for example, you, the use of point-to-point uh, -point and publish, as well as subscribe models, um, in order to facilitate the actual flow of information between applications. Now, this would be um, along with additional features like managed uh, messaging services, extending enterprise messaging to the cloud, as well as going and connecting cloud-based apps to core business systems by going and integrating with existing on-premise uh, MQ networks. Now, you can also have added benefits of being able to provision messaging capabilities in the cloud of choice, and also you can use it on IBM Cloud or Amazon Web Services. You also have the added benefit of managing it using MQ Explorer, the MQ console, or even using uh, a command line and having script commands for uh, utilization of MQ. Right, so let's quickly have a look now at uh, artificial intelligence. Right, so when it comes to artificial, uh, artificial intelligence uh, services that are available from the IBM Cloud, there are a whole bunch of different services. Um, these include the AI lifecycle management tools, 
uh, text an analysis tools, uh, intelligent search tools, as well as speech and language services that are available. Now, the actual AI lifecycle management tools um, basically help you to build and scale AI with trust and transparency, and it does so by automating the AI lifecycle management. Now, with Watson Studio, this would be a, a suite of tools and a collaborative environment for data scientists, as well as developers and domain experts. Uh, next, we have Watson Machine Learning. So here we can uh, run and deploy machine learning models anywhere um, across any uh, cloud. Um, then next, we have our Watson Knowledge Catalog, basically to go and discover accurate, cat uh, uh, discover as well as curate and, and, and categorize, um, and also share any of our data assets and models um, with a specific uh, point of asset control. We also have uh, Watson OpenScale, which we can utilize in terms of uh, measuring and managing our AI models. And this is done in production in order to promote trust and confidence. Then we have our Watson Natural Language Processor. This uh, uses deep learning in order to extract metadata from text, for example, uh, categories and keywords, uh, sentiment and emotion, uh, relation and syntax, and so on. We also have our Watson Tone Analyzer. So we can use it for a linguistic analysis in order to identify specific tones, for example, anger, fear, and disgust. And also, we can go about detecting social uh, uh, propensities, uh, for example, extravagation, uh, uh, sorry, extroversion and uh, language styles. And also it has analytical and confident and tentative uh, detection as well. And this can be done from text. Now, next, we also have our Watson Assistant. So with the Watson Assistant, we can use it to go about building uh, conversational interfaces. Um, and this would be into any of our application uh, devices or channels. And this is quite an easy to use interface that we can utilize in terms of uh, building it in. Now, this also includes uh, plugins for Slack as well as other applications. And it also provides us a uh, catalog of entities for inter industries to go and uh, enable rapid start with some of the most frequent asked questions. Now, it can go about integrating with uh, Twilio as well as Sal Salesforce, uh, Zendesk, and also voice agents. Right, so a bit more on artificial intelligence. So we've got Watson Discovery, uh, which is a intelligent uh, search service that delivers specific answers to questions while serving up an entire document for exploration. Now you can use this for train with entire documents. Um, and um, also you can use uh, Watson Knowledge Studio to build a custom model uh, to train Watson Discovery with unique relationships and entities. An example of this is using the car service manual to train Watson Discovery in order to look for specific information about what kind of engine oil to use. All right, next we have our Watson, Watson speech to text. So we can go and transform voice into written text. Now the Watson text to speech is capable of converting the written te text into a, a natural sounding audio in a variety of different languages and voices. Also, we have the Watson uh, language translator. With it, we can dynamically translate new uh, patterns or, or, or even uh, conversational documents from over 20 different languages. And we can go and identify up to 68 languages with it. Now, lastly, we have the Watson natural language classifier. So we can assign custom categories to input a text. All right, so next, let's quickly have a look at the analytics side of things. Right, so in terms of uh, data analytics, um, just a quick brief overview here. Um, your data analy analytics is uh, the science of going and analyzing the raw data in order to make conclusions about the actual information. Now, analytics go and help organizations to make data-driven decisions. Uh, 
And also there are multiple different types of analytics that are available to us. So firstly, we have descriptive analytics. So the focus on past performance and also to mine the historical data in order to determine reasons for past failures or successes. We have diagnostics analytics to be able to go and examine data to answer specific questions like why did this happen? And then also we can go and use techniques, for example, uh, drill down um, also to help us with uh, data discovery uh, in terms of data mining and correlation. We also have predictive uh, analytics. So to go and analyze the current and historical facts in order to go about making predictions about how future events might occur or otherwise unknown events. Now we can also utilize a variety of uh, statistical techniques all the way from data mining as well as predictive modeling and machine learning um, in order to utilize it. Now we also can use it to take advantage of specific results of our descriptive and predictive analytics and then suggest a decision from that point forward. And then we also have our open source projects um, in our analytics space. Now with IBM, our analytics engine offering is based on popular open source uh, projects, which include Apache Spark as well as Apache Hadoop. Now with Apache Spark, this is a unified analytics engine for big data processing with built-in modules in terms of streaming, SQL, uh, machine learning, and graphic processing. Now it also has 750 different contributors from 200 different organizations. When it comes to Apache Hadoop, this provides for a distributed processing of large data sets across clusters of computers, and this is using simple programming models. It also utilizes the MapReduce programming model in terms of uh, parallel processing of large volumes of data in a distributed environment. Right, so let's have a look at the different analytics services on the IBM Cloud. Right, so we have our analytics engine that allows us to go and deploy as well as develop our applications while utilizing Apache Spark and Apache Hadoop. It gives us on-demand scalability in order to compute uh, for, for compute and storage tiers um, that are decoupled from each other. Now, the HIPAA uh, ready um, functionality is there for our Dallas region only. And um, you can also utilize it to go and customize the environment with third-party analytics uh, uh, libraries and packages. Then next, we have our streaming analytics. So for ingest, as well as analyze and monitoring, and also correlate, uh, correlating the actual data in a real-time scenario. You can use it for evaluating a broad range of streaming data, whether it be unstructured text, video, audio, uh, geospatial, and sensory data. All right, now you can also go about uh, utilizing it in terms of performing a real-time analysis on data in motion and also connect with any type of data source. And uh, that means that whether it's unstructured, structured, or streaming, it doesn't matter. You can also utilize it for creating adaptive, adaptive uh, stream applications. And this is done utilizing a built-in domain analytics, for example, machine learning, as well as natural language and spatial temporal, as well as text, acoustic, and so on. Next, we have our DB2 warehouse. So this would be a fully managed elastic cloud data warehouse that goes about delivering uh, independent scaling of storage and computing. Now, it is uh, built for mach machine learning, and it's very highly scalable and secure. Also, you can use it for train and run models directly in your DB2 um, warehouse engine, and this is done utilizing SQL, Python, and R. Um, all right. So then in terms of um, it, it also allows for, for uh, control and, and monitoring, uh, of database activity with fine-grained access control and also database auditing that's available. Now, you can also leverage your DB2 to go about running existing Oracle applications on your DB2 warehouse, for example, the fact that it is Oracle compatible. 
So that those are the benefits of uh, utilizing the DB2 warehouse and some of the services available with it. Next is our Cognos dashboard. Now we can um, utilize the Cognos dashboard in order to go and add um, our end-to-end -end visualization to our applications. We can also see that it would give us uh, end user uh, access to interact via drag and drop type of functionalities. And also it allows us to update to the data uh, in order to reflect the, uh, the, the updates in the visualizations in real time. We can also use it to explore data using filters and navigation paths. And then lastly, we have our information server. Basically, this would be the market leading data integration platform with products to go about understanding as well as uh, cleansing or monitoring and also transforming and delivering specific data. Now, it provides us with collab collab collaboration um, in terms of bridging the gap between businesses and also uh, IT itself. Now, the data stage tool is what creates uh, jobs to extract as well as transform and load data. Now, the information governance catalog goes about tracking the data lineage. And then your information analyzer would uh, give you data profiling as well as um, uh, analysis in order to go and accurately uh, go about evaluating the actual content and also the structure of, of data for consistency and quality. Right, so those are the different uh, analytics uh, services that are available on IBM Cloud. Let's move on and have a look at DevOps. Right. So when it comes to DevOps, we have covered it slightly, um, just briefly in previous sessions. So now we're just gonna go a bit into detail in terms of what DevOps is and how it functions. So firstly, DevOps goes about combining software development and IT operations. And from this, we got the name DevOps, All right? Now the main goal for DevOps is to go and shorten the development life cycle. And it does so by providing continuous uh, deployment along with high software quality and this is done with automated tests and delivery governance now with continuous uh, integration firstly our automation uh, testing uh, is done which checks that the application is not broken whenever new commits are uh, integrated into the main branch so what this does is prevents significant drift competing changes as well as merging conflicts Next, we have our continuous delivery. So this would be an automated release process that merges changes from the automated testing process and then goes about pushing these into a staging environment for us. And then we have our continuous deployment. So here we have the section that automates the actual process of pushing changes from our staging environment to our production environment. And then lastly, we have continuous testing. So what the continuous testing uh, incorporates is that uh, it has an automate, uh, automated feedback section uh, at different stages um, throughout the software development cycle. Now, basically, this would allow for a much better streamlined creation of our applications and management. Right, so a bit more on DevOps. So IBM Cloud DevOps services are a set of different tools that go about supporting the development, deployment, and continuous delivery, as well as operational tasks. Now, the set of tools also um, come with uh, templates that allow for the automation of developing and deploying of our applications. So in the DevOps tool chain, firstly, we have the set of tools and templates to automate the developing and deploying of applications, and these includes templates for building and deploying projects. Now, we also have uh, the fact that it supports integration with third-party tools. Now, the continuous uh, delivery service goes about automating the uh, building and deployment of applications, and it would be limited to the building and deployment of, uh, as well as testing and, and ongoing operations of the applications on the IBM Cloud Platform, or other compatible platforms or infrastructure offerings. 
Now, a continuous delivery service instance is what would be required to go about creating and using DevOps tool chains that include certain tool integrations. And then lastly, our delivery pipeline. Now, the pipeline uh, would be part of your continuous delivery service. And this would be the section that automates your builds, your unit tests, and deployments. Also, Tekton pipelines um, would be uh, specified in YAML files. And these are utilized to go about configuring as well as running your continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines. A classic pipeline would be specified graphically and can also be utilized in terms of your delivery pipelines. Right, so here's a quick example of utilizing a DevOps approach with IBM Cloud toolchain. All right, so starting with Think, we use GitLab to go and plan sprint tasks using issues. Secondly, we go to code, so we commit the actual code changes from Orion Web Integrated Development Environment straight to the repository. And then once it's committed, the deliver phase would be started automatically. Now, in the deliver phase, the latest version of the code is then delivered to staging and production, and this is done using the delivery pipeline. Then in our run phase, our application is then pushed to a Kubernetes service. And then lastly, in our learn phase, the Google Analytics go about gathering data and also feedback in order to incorporate in future releases. Right, now... Um, in terms of culture, we can use Slack to go and enable a faster and more efficient team communication method. Right now, within the IBM uh, Cloud tool chain, uh, we have several of different options in terms of the code, um, deliver, run, learn, and culture phases that are offered to us. Now, some code options include the fact that we have GitLab CE, we have GitHub, uh, Bitbucket, um, and so on. Now, also, uh, Bitbucket basically delivers, uh, or, or all of these together can deliver different options in the IBM Cloud toolchain. Um, but some of the options that are included are the fact that we have, um, uh, let's say, we've got Docker application. Um, and it's Helm chart together in, in source control and uh, build and deploy automatically to a Kubernetes cluster. All right. Now, also, we can go and develop an application and deploy changes using a uh, RASI uh, agent. And uh, this would be done also in a Kubernetes cluster. Um, we can also go and deploy the applications to one of uh, the two different uh, platforms, for example, our Kubernetes cluster, as well as a virtual server of uh, our choice. Now, actual integration tools, allowing for gathering of data and feedback about application to continuously improve and prioritize uh, features uh, features and, 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 and so on in the future. Um, in the release code include the fact that we have New Relic, Google Analytics, and uh, Source Labs. Now, some tools to improve cross-functional communication between teams um, include the fact that we can utilize Slack, uh, PagerDuty, as well as Jira. Okay, so that was a quick overview of DevOps, a bit more in-depth. Let's now have a look at blockchain next. Okay, so a quick overview of blockchain. So this would be a, a growing list of different records that we refer to as blocks, and these are linked using cryptography. Now, each block would contain a cryptographic hash of the previous block, along with additional information, for example, the timestamp and also transaction data. Now, once it's been recorded, the data in any given block would not be able to be, uh, it cannot be altered in any way. Um, uh, especially not without um, the alteration of all the subsequent blocks. Basically, this uh, would require the consensus of the entire uh, network as a majority um, in order to have any changes done to any of the subsequent blocks and have that implemented onto the network. Now, the value of blockchain 
comes from the participants going and sharing common smart contracts and agreeing on the actual source of truth. And then a blockchain also provides participants with visibility into the history um, in terms of a particular asset and how ownership has changed over a particular period of time. Right, so let's go through some of the key elements um, of blockchain networks. Sorry. All right. So some key elements of the blockchain networks include that, uh, firstly, they are distributed. All right. So all network participants have uh, access to distributed uh, ledger. Secondly, they are immutable. So the, uh, no one can go about changing transactions after it's been recorded to the shared ledger itself. And then in terms of smart contracts, um, we have self-executing contracts that are stored on the blockchain and then executed automatically and also recorded as transactions with the block itself. All right. Now, when we look at IBM blockchain, uh, this platform is based on Hyperledger fabric and uh, basically runs on the IBM cloud platform. Now, it aims to provide an entire life cycle for a blockchain solution all the way from inception through deployment and way beyond. Now, Hyperledger Fabric is a framework for building blockchain applications. So let's quickly have a look here. It has uh, been adopted by many cloud providers. Also, it is an Apache 2 license open source project. It was originally donated to Linux Foundation by IBM and Digital Asset. And then it also requires smart contracts in order to create a blockchain application. Now, some offers uh, that are available is the fact that we offer software development kits or SDKs in Node.js and Java formats. And then also some plans uh, in terms of support for Python and Go um, are planned for later releases. Right, so let's move on to Internet of Things. Okay, so with Internet of Things, um, this is a system of interrelated uh, uh, computing devices, firstly, that are capable of transfer, uh, transferring data um, over a network, and this is done without requiring any interaction from anyone specifically. All right, so no human interaction is required for the data to be moved over the network, and there are many different use cases for our IoT environment. All right, so let's go through some examples. Firstly, we have predictive maintenance. So basically, this allows us, uh, us to keep our assets uh, up and running um, in order to significant go uh, and, and decrease the operational expenditures that might be uh, associated with our devices. Basically, this can potentially save companies millions of dollars. Secondly, would be asset tracking. Also, this would allow our enterprises in, to go about locating and monitoring key assets that they might have along the actual supply chain and go and optimize their logistics. Also, to go about maintaining inventory levels and prevent quality issues and go about detecting theft issues. All right, and then next we have our connected vehicles. So you can automate normal driving tasks utilizing computer enhanced vehicles. Now the IBM cloud IoT platform does allow for communication with and consumption of data from connected devices and gateways. And this is done using a built-in web console to monitor IoT data and also analyze it in real time. Now, it has several great features, so let's go through these features. Firstly, register and connect. Basically, uh, we can register and connect devices and gateways very quickly and securely. Secondly is manage information. So we can go about controlling what happens uh, to the data from the connected devices. All right. Also, we can manage data storage and configure data transformation and also integrate with other uh, data services. So now, third, we have the analyze section. So we can go and monitor the real-time device data through rules, as well as analytics and dashboards. Then in terms of managing uh, risk and security, uh, 
We can go about protecting our IoT integrity through secure connectivity and access control um, for our users and our applications. And then lastly, we have the view dashboard. So we can use this for uh, viewing our connected devices by specific device type. We can also go and have a look at how much data has been transferred and also view the real time um, uh, sensor data and geolocation data that might be coming from our IoT devices. Right, now in terms of um, the basic overview of IoT process, here's an example. So firstly, we have uh, registering the IoT device in the IoT platform. Then the IoT devices send the data to the IoT platform, and this is done utilizing MQTT. From there, the IoT platform goes and acts as a messenger broker and writes the data to the cloud and IBM event streams and DB2 warehouses. From there, the data is written to cloud object storage for long-term storage. And lastly, our analytics go about uh, connecting to the device and external data sources in order to have custom dashboards for business user, uh, users. Right, so next we have our cloud packs. Now, when it comes to the actual cloud packs, these are containerized software solutions that are built in order to run pretty much anywhere, and they make container management and application modernization much easier for organizations. Now, cloud packs uh, provide value in multiple areas, for example, the modular architecture, which basically allows us to uh, pick and choose which software we would like to deploy. We also have put AI to work, so where we can operationalize AI through a business. And then we also have built on OpenShift, so the fact that it can be run anywhere. Now, IBM CloudPacks, like I said, can run on any type of platform. So IBM Cloud, on-premise, on client hardware, or any other cloud. Now, this is done by first provisioning OpenShift and then installing CloudPacks on top of that. Now, the six CloudPacks covered in our course are pretty much applications, data, multi-cloud management, integration, security, and business automation. Now, the main purpose of IBM Cloud Pack for our applications is to go about assisting in modernizing existing applications and also going and building new cloud native applications. And then from there, we have tools um, and the use of these tools in the Cloud Packs that are uh, listed here. For example, we have the Cloud Native Accelerators, which allow us to accelerate the cloud native development by bringing together open source technologies and then putting them in a microservices-based framework. We also have IBM modernization and transformation. So modernization guidance provides a, a plan to strategically update applications. And we also have our Java Enterprise Edition platform. So this would be a collection of Java AA uh, PIs that assist in writing secure, flexible, and server-side applications. Um, mobile app development tools are also available. Now, these allow us to build apps for mobile, wearables, conversation, web, and progressive web apps. Now, let's have a look at the cloud packs, uh, packs a bit more in detail. So when it comes to the IBM Cloud Pack for data, this has a single platform that goes and integrates data management as well as data governance and analysis. And it also goes and includes both your IBM and open source databases and also gives us um, the following functionality and features. So firstly, we have data governance. So the automation um, in terms of discovery and classification of our data. We have masking of sensitive data. And then um, with data virtualization, this is uh, easy query across multiple sources on the cloud or on premise. Then IBM Cloud AI Services also includes our Watson Assistant or Discovery. We have the AI model lifecycle tools, which allow us to go about creating um, notebooks with uh, uh, Jupyter or, or RS Studio. 
And then um, we have the functionality of serving with Watson machine learning and also the automating uh, process with auto AI. So let's look what is included in our cloud packs. So our cloud packs for our multi-cloud management would be a IT management platform. And uh, basically this gives us full visibility and control wherever the actual workload might be running. It also gives us several different features and capabilities. For example, we have a dashboard where we can monitor our application lifecycle and management and also go about deploying and moving applications across clouds. We also have our cloud protection and compliance. So automate the policy enforcement and compliance testing. And then we have the SRE tooling and AI ops basically used for event correlation and machine learning in order to go about improving our operational efficiency and readiness. Now we also have our add on capabilities. Basically, these allow our users to go about utilizing add on capabilities from IBM partners, for example, uh, Turbonomic as well as Sysdig, uh, Yumio and Hazelcast. Right, so let's have a look at the integration and security side of our cloud packs. So the IBM cloud pack for integration is going to be a complete set of integration capabilities to go about efficiently connecting our applications and data wherever they might reside. Now with IBM Cloud Pack for integration, we can go about utilizing APIs, uh, Connect, App Connect, MQ, Event Streams, as well as Aspira in order to move our data. Now IBM Cloud Pack for security is a platform that assists in uncovering hidden threats and also allows organizations to go and make more informed decisions about the actual risks. So the core platform services and integration capabilities are, for example, the fact that we have threat intelligent insights, also the data explorer. In terms of integration capabilities, we have QRadar and Splunk that's available. All right, so let's have a look at our business automation for Cloud Packs. There we go. All right, so IBM Cloud Pack for business automation also gives us uh, applications in core areas where automation provides benefits. So other functionality um, uh, this Cloud Pack provides includes the fact that we have uh, low code tools, so we can utilize APIs as well as application connectors um, in order for us to go about consuming the actual content in our business applications. In terms of business workflow automation, we can utilize the IBM business automation workflow in order to have an automated uh, point for our end-to-end -end workflows. And then with business policy automation, we can utilize the IBM Operational Decision Manager also to have an automated uh, point for our implementation of our business policies. Right, great. So now that we've gone through this unit, let's quickly do a module summary and just summarize everything we've uh, just covered. So we started off looking at our databases. So there are a whole bunch of different types of databases that go about storing data in different ways. We discussed r relational databases that use table structures. We also um, had a look at uh, document databases that are semi-structured and prove for or provide more flexibility to, towards the users. And we had a look at key value databases that use dictionaries to make for more effective caches. All right, we had a look at database as a service, basically giving users um, the ability to provision a database on cloud without setting up their own hardware, installing their own database software, or even having to manage the database themselves. We also had a look at um, IBM Cloud in terms of how it has several different managed database options. We had a look at DB2, Postgres, MongoDB, Cloudant, Elasticsearch, Redis, and ETCD. In terms of integration, our integration enables the secure communication between services and also allows for us to have sharing of data between applications. 
And then IBM Cloud offers many different integration services. For example, we have API Connect, App Connect, Event Stream, as well as MQ. Right, in terms of uh, AI, we had a look at IBM Cloud offerings in terms of uh, the model lifecycle management tools like uh, Watson Studio, Watson Machine Learning, and also Watson OpenScale. Now, IBM Cloud has AI services with pre-made models that can be uh, extended with easy-to-use interfaces, and these include our Watson Language Translator, the Watson Assistant, Watson Discovery, and Watson Natural Language Understanding. Now, the AI services on IBM Cloud all have well-documented APIs and SDK support, along with uh, uh, done for popular languages, for example, uh, Python, Go, Android, Node.js, Swift, Java, and Salesforce. Right. Then in terms of analytics, so the data analytics is the science of analyzing the raw data in order to go about making conclusions about that specific information. Now, any type of information can be subjected to data analytics techniques in order to get insight to uh, that actual, uh, that can actually be used in order to improve things. Now, IBM Cloud also offers many different integration services, for example, the analytics engine, streaming analytics, DB2 warehouse, also Cognos dashboard and information server. Now, the analytics engine also um, offering is, is based on popular open source projects, which are Hadoop and Spark. Right. Then we had a look at um, DevOps, basically being a set of practices that combine software development and IT operations to go about shortening the development lifecycle and to provide high quality service. The IBM Cloud DevOps services provide a set of tools that support development, deployment, delivery, and operational tasks. Now, the IBM Cloud tool chains are assembled by combining tasks. The DevOps service has support for IBM Cloud deployment platforms and third-party providers, for example, GitHub, Bitbucket, Slack, Jira, and a whole bunch more. Now, blockchain is a data structure that contains an immutable history of transactions in a network in cryptographically ordered blocks. Now, the order of the blocks on the network is reached by the agreement of the nodes utilizing the consensus algorithm. Now, Hyperledger Fabric is a open source project that implements a distributed ledger platform and is available on cloud uh, providers, for example, IBM Cloud, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure. Now, the IBM blockchain uh, platform is based on Hyperledger Fabric and adds many operational tools to accelerate the development out of the blockchain solutions. All right, and the last two items on our list here, we had a look at Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things is a system of uh, interrelated computing devices that transfers the data over a network and has practical uh, uh, use cases in many different industries. Now, the IBM Cloud Internet of Things platform also allows you to connect and register your IoT-enabled devices. The IoT platform also provides a dashboard to go about monitoring um, and managing all of your connected devices. And then we had a look at Cloud Packs. Now, the cloud packs are a collection of containerized software, and we can also choose to install all components or just a few of the components. Now, cloud packs are based on OpenShift and as such can be run anywhere on the IBM cloud, on premise, or any other cloud, as long as you install OpenShift first. All right, now there are six different cloud packs. We have application, data, integration, automation, multi cloud, and security. Right, so let's quickly go through a couple of uh, review questions and uh, then we'll finalize. All right, so question one over here. Um, we have which type of database would be appropriate for, sh for, for shopping cart data? 
We have uh, firstly A documents, B relational, C key value, and D SQL. All right, and then question two here. Which database is classified as a document oriented database? A, DB2, B, DB2 hosted, C, MongoDB, and D, Redis. Okay, so the correct answers would be for question one is C. The key value databases are commonly used for leaderboards, caches, as well as your shopping cart data. Question two there, the correct answer is also C. So MongoDB is considered a document oriented database. All right, so our next uh, two questions here. Um, firstly, question three, which statement best describes your event streams? Is it A, that it provides API creation and management with security rich features and centralized governance? Or B, that it allows for connection of applications, automation of tasks with hundreds of built-in connectors? Or is it C, that it provides enterprise-grade messaging capabilities such as point-to-point -point and publish subscribe models to facilitate the flow of information between applications? Or lastly, D, that it integrates with Watson Internet of Things and IBM Cloud Functions to leverage event streams? All right, and then uh, question four there. Which of our IBM Cloud services is uh, used to run and deploy machine learning models anywhere across any cloud? Is it A, Watson Knowledge Services, B, Watson Machine Learning, C, Watson OpenScale, or D, Watson Studio? All right, so I'll just give you a moment to think on that one. All right. So the quick, correct answer for question three would be D. It is your event streaming uh, that integ integrates with uh, what's an Internet of Things and IBM Cloud Functions to go and leverage event streams. Now, the correct answer for question four is B. So what's in machine learning is used to run and deploy machine learning models anywhere across any cloud. All right, so our next two questions here. So question five, which statement best describes what's an assistant? Is it that it converts written text into a natural sounding audio at A? Or is it B, that it delivers specific answers to questions while serving up the entire document for exploration? C, that it uses linguistic analysis to identify tones and detect social propensities? Or D, that it builds conversational interfaces into an application device or channel? Right, and question six, which of these statements are best describing the analytics engine service? Is it A, that it controls and monitors database activity, B, that it deploys and develops applications using Apache Spark and Apache Hadoop, C, that it provides end-to-end -end visualization to applications, or D, that it performs real-time analysis on data in motion? All right. Now the correct question, uh, answers to these questions, question five is D. So what's an assistant is what we use to build our conversational interfaces into any of our application uh, devices or channels. And for question six, the correct answer is B. So the analytics engine deploys and uh, develops your applications using Apache Spark and Apache Hadoop. All right. And now our next set of questions here, we're almost done. So uh, question seven, uh, which practice in includes uh, frequently committing code to prevent significant drift, um, competing changes, and merging conflicts? Is it A, continuous development, B, continuous delivery, C, continuous integration, or D, continuous testing? All right, and question eight, which statement is true regarding continuous delivery pipelines? That A, the Tecton pipelines are specified in XML or in YAML or in JSON in C, or lastly, that they are specified graphically in D.
Okay, so the correct answers, question seven is C, continuous integration includes your uh, frequently committing code to prevent significant drift and so on. And for question eight, it is your Tekton pipelines that are specified in YAML. So the correct answer is B. Right, and so our last three questions. So question nine, which statement best describes the Internet of Things? Is it that it's a system of interrelated computing devices that transfer data over a network without requiring human interaction? B, a flexible way to build, operate, and grow blockchain solutions? C, a dashboard to view devices connected to the Internet? Or D, a type of continuous delivery pipeline? Right, and question 10. Which of the Cloud Pack uh, provides tools to automate the implementation of business policies? Is it your Cloud Pack for business uh, automation at A, or B for data, C for integration, or D for security? All right, and your last question there, I, question 11, IBM Cloud can run on any platform because they are installed on top of what? Is it A, the blockchain, B, Docker, C, Kubernetes, or D, OpenShift? Right, so the answers to our questions here. Question nine would be A. So the Internet of Things is best described as a system of interrelated computing devices that can transfer data over a network, and this is done without requiring human interactions. Right, question 10 is A. So IBM Cloud Pack for business automation provides tools to automate the implementation of business policies. And then for question 11, so the correct answer there is D. Provisioning of OpenShift and installing an IBM uh, Cloud Pack on top of OpenShift is what allows IBM Cloud Packs to run anywhere. All right, great. So there are some screenshots of the answers for the first couple of questions up to question seven. Now the reviews are available. You can pause the slide at any point if you would like to in the reviews to just go over these. Here's uh, the last couple of questions. All right, so we've gone through all of the answers. Okay, so I would just like to thank everyone for joining me. It has been great having you all here. I hope you had fun, and I hope this assists you on your way to becoming uh, badged up for a cloud advocate. All right, have a great day further, and uh, goodbye.